So you finish all your dialogue recording, you bring it back into your computer, you load it in, you listen through it, and as you boost the volume, you realize there is a bunch of unwanted background noise causing clutter in your mix. How do you restore that using Audition? One of the most common things that happens in dialogue recording is you can't control the room sound, the room tone, the air conditioning, uh, noise outside, stuff like that. And so you do get the mic close to your source. Uh, the room doesn't sound bad acoustically, but the air conditioning droning on or just other background noise, or you just have a bad mic that doesn't have a really low noise floor, you wanna take care of that stuff. So there's a couple ways to do it, but I'm gonna show the most basic way in Audition how to do a noise removal and restoration process, as well as some simple gating, which is a dynamics processor to take out any sort of unwanted noise at all. So let's get right into Adobe Audition here and talk about noise removal and restoration. So let's just grab a piece of dialogue here and see what we're dealing with. This permeates the leadership team, our management team, and everyone that walks through the door. Um, when people walk in here, you know, Okay, so there's definitely some sound going on uh, underneath his, his vocals there, his dialogue. And what I think it was, was a combination of a cheap microphone. We ended up losing the, the shotgun mic for this shoot due to reasons I still don't understand, but uh, also some air conditioning going on in the room. So we're gonna zoom way into Audition here like I just did. And you can see this waveform. This is probably the quietest part, but we're just gonna do a looping. We're gonna do a cycle right here where there's no dialogue, no noise, and see what that sounds like. So you can hear kind of his breath. And he's taking a new breath, but that is basically employees. So right here we can isolate just the room tone. It doesn't matter how small it is. You just want to highlight a piece that is pure, the tone you want to remove, because that is going to be how this thing processes. So that's going to be all this tool needs to then isolate that from the rest of your dialogue track. So now that we have a highlighted portion of our unwanted or undesired noise, we'll go up here to effects and come down to noise reduction and restoration and hit capture noise print. This is important. You have to do this before you actually run the process. Once it captures that print, it captures whatever you have highlighted. So it's gonna find that room tone, all the frequencies and amplitudes of that exact room tone, and then go through and process it out. So then deselect, you can even hit the uh, forward slash key to get back to your main view here. Back to effects, go to noise reduction, restoration, click noise reduction, process. This brings up your interface right here, and up here you have a noise floor threshold and highs and lows kind of over over the frequency spectrum so you can see what you're dealing with. You have two faders here for how much percentage of noise reduction and also how many decibels you want to reduce it by. A couple of important things under advanced I'll show you in just a minute. Right now let's just see, uh, let's go to some general settings like 60% reduction at about 10 decibels, see what this sounds like. Hit the space bar to play. I think what I've learned over the past, um, for me, what I think I've learned since we started is so it's definitely reduced it, but there is some warbling sounds underneath it. So listen right here where there's not much going on. Not necessarily effective, but help you grow as a leader because obviously you're now- We'll turn it on and off. At the head of a growing and already large company that wasn't large when you started it. So here's an interesting box you can click called output noise only and just grab a cycle here and we can listen to what, what they're cutting only. Hit play. So this is actually a really high quality sample here because we've taken out all of that room tone and not as much dialogue as you usually end up taking out because sometimes if you don't get a quality noise print, what ends up happening is you take out a lot of the dialogue and you lose some of your frequencies of dialogue. Let's listen again. That's cool, so let's play it again here. Um, we love the fact that we can provide you know, jobs for people in this area. Um, all over the Kansas City metropolitan area. So then we'll go to advanced here. Spectral decay rate is just gonna talk about how much uh, noise is in between your dialogue takes. So basically, how much of that kind of warbly sound you get, the kind of sound, and I'll just show you what I mean here. Let's try to find a spot where it's more quiet. To be successful. We're gonna loop that and turn it on and off. To, to be successful. To, to be successful. To, to be successful. To, to be successful. So you hear that kind of weird electronic kind of sample rate, weird sounding thing. Smoothing is supposed to uh, decrease those burbly sounds. I don't to, really see to, it. 
I don't really see it working in this Be case. Successful. I usually go with a spectral noise decay rate of zero percent. So I really do like these settings. We could bump it to 100 here and see what that sounds like. To, to be successful. And we could even reduce, to, to reduce it by 100 decibels. Be successful. To, to be successful. Hit the output, output noise again just to see what's going on. So it's taking out just a little bit of his dialogue, but really not that much. Um, I want to be the one that can provide the platform for people to grow, develop. So you know what, I'm liking those settings. Go ahead and hit apply. Now once that is applied, this audio file is now ready for processing beyond the noise reduction. And really, before I do any other processing, you might want to gate that out. Now a gate is like a compressor, except for it kind of works the opposite way. You designate a threshold at which no audio will come through. And if your audio signal falls below that threshold, it cuts off absolutely everything. Uh, gates are really handy for voiceovers and sometimes for dialogue. Um, but for this case, because of those warbly sound effects, those burbly gurgly things, I would say a gate would be really important. So we're gonna go up here and find a gate from Waves. And that's been a very powerful uh, motivator for me to make sure that I am delivering. So in this graph right here, you're gonna see where the audio is peaking and that'll allow you to set your threshold. In this case, I'm gonna kinda come up to negative 40 and see what that sounds like. On the, on, the, on the promise that we make to develop our people and really create these opportunities. See how that's a little too hard of a gate because we're cutting off the beginning and ending of his uh, words, losing some sibilance. So let's go to about 50. For our leaders, because they're the ones that are gonna take us uh, into the future. Um, and I don't wanna be the limiting factor. Um, I so even a little bit lower here. I wanna be the one that can provide the platform for people to grow, develop, and, and really, you know, take off in their careers here and provide the impact that we need um, to. So that sounds pretty good. And what a gate is gonna do there is take away any audio below a certain threshold. And when he dips below that threshold, when he stops talking or takes a breath, it'll cut out all those burbly gurglies. And that is a noise reduction process. So well, that's basically it. That should help you improve your mix dramatically if you have problems recording out in the field. Leave a like, leave a comment. Would love to interact with you again. You know, keyboards are the way we talk. So let's talk with keyboards. Or I guess if you're typing on your phone, watching this on mobile. How many of you are on mobile? Raise your hand if you're on mobile. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this and I will see you next week.